Welcome back to Humans in Five. The world might be a little complicated these days, but one great thing about being alive in the 21st century is that health is actually okay. While there are huge disparities and inequalities in health around the world, researchers looking into long-term health trends note that people are generally living longer, healthier lives today than they have in the past. But how do we know that we are actually living longer, healthier lives? Today, we're going to start a two-part series about some of the ways researchers explore health in the past and how we use that information to see how patterns of health and disease have changed in the present. When researchers investigate past populations, they often try to figure out both how long people lived and their quality of life. Remember our episode on age estimation? We use those techniques to try and estimate age of death from skeletal remains and compare groups from different regions and across different time periods to try and determine why some people seem to live longer lives than others. These comparisons have largely found that we live much longer lives now than we did in historic and even prehistoric times. Life, or at least life spans, seem to be pretty good these days, but there are some issues involved in drawing these types of comparisons. As we mentioned before, age estimations are just that, estimates. They are far from perfect. Age estimates become less accurate and less precise as individuals get older. It may seem like lives were shorter when looking at skeletons just because we don't have methods that are able to identify very old individuals in the past. In terms of living healthier lives these days, researchers often look at skeletal indicators of specific and non-specific diseases. Some medical conditions leave permanent marks on our bones. For example, diseases like syphilis leave a range of distinctive marks on the skeleton as they develop and get worse over time. There are also non-specific indicators of stress. These are skeletal changes that occur when an individual is chronically sick or malnourished. Bone isn't able to develop and maintain itself in a normal fashion, leading to these detectable indicators. For example, as our teeth in their enamel develops, issues with tooth growth lead to enamel defects on teeth, which are small but fairly sure signs of childhood stress. However, since any number of stressful episodes may cause these indicators to form, they suggest periods of stress rather than the source of the stress. But there's an even bigger issue with looking at skeletal indicators of stress and disease. Firstly, not all diseases leave marks on bones. There are conditions that never leave a trace in the skeletal or archaeological record. Secondly, many of the conditions that do affect bone require a bit of time to impact our skeletons. So, if we find a skeleton with no marks whatsoever, were they perfectly healthy, or did they die really quickly of a dramatic disease? If we see someone with many signs of stress, were they really unwell, or were they a survivor who lived long enough to show signs of disease? This conundrum is known as the osteological paradox. Researchers investigating prehistoric health bear all of these issues in mind and try to balance between many lines of evidence, including cues from the archaeology. To help us understand the relationship between our bones, our health, and our longevity, people are now taking a closer look at the historic records and instances of disease. In more recent times, we have the luxury of medical records, recorded causes and ages of death, and skeletal remains that can help us separate those with and without diseases. But a bigger question remains. What does it even mean to be healthy? This question is so big, you'll just have to stay tuned for our next Materials and Methods segment to hear more. We hope you stay disease-free until then, and we'll see you next time on Humans in Five. Don't forget to subscribe.